Hello, my name is Dr. Rylan, and today I will be discussing malrotation. The outline of this talk is as follows. I will give an introduction of malrotation and discuss the prevalence of the disease. I will review the embryology and types of rotational disorders. I will then finally discuss the presentation, diagnosis, and management of malrotation. Malrotation is defined as the incomplete rotation of the intestine during fetal development. A spectrum of anomalies exist. It is associated with other anomalies, including intestinal atresia, imperforate anus, cardiac anomalies, duodenal web, Meckel's diverticulum, hernias, and trisomy 21. Malrotation occurs in 1 in 6,000 live births. Midgut maturation is divided into four distinct stages, herniation, rotation, retraction, and fixation. During the fourth gestational week, the intestinal loop herniates into the embryonic coelom. The bowel then rotates counterclockwise 270 degrees around the superior mesenteric artery. The duodeno jejunal limb is then fixed in the left upper abdomen and the cecum in the right lower abdomen, as demonstrated in this image. There are several types of rotational disorders. Non-rotation is defined as the failure of the normal intestine 270-degree counterclockwise rotation around the SMA. In non-rotation, the duodeno jejunal limb lies in the right hemiabdomen with the cecocolic limb in the left hemiabdomen. An incomplete rotation, the normal rotation is arrested at or near 180 degrees. The cecum resides in the right upper abdomen and obstructing peritoneal bands are present. In reverse rotation, an errant 90-degree clockwise rotation occurs. The transverse colon is to the right of the SMA, passing through the retroduodenal tunnel dorsal to the artery in the small bowel mesentery. Up to 75% of children with malrotation present within the first month of life. Another 15% present within the first year. The cardinal symptom of malrotation is bilious vomiting. Other symptoms include abdominal pain and distension, abdominal wall erythema. Lab abnormalities include leukocytosis, hyperkalemia, thrombocytopenia, and metabolic acidosis. The failure to treat malrotation can lead to peritonitis, sepsis, shock, and death. Some patients with malrotation are asymptomatic and incidentally diagnosed as children or as young adults. These patients should be educated about obstructive symptoms and monitored for symptoms. To diagnose malrotation, an abdominal x-ray should be performed. This will show gastric or duodenal distension, bowel wall thickening, and edema. An upper gastrointestinal contrast study should also be obtained. This will show the duodenum traveling across the spine to the left. A corkscrew appearance is abnormal. A duodenal jejunal flexure will be seen to the right of the spine, as demonstrated in this image. A Doppler ultrasound can also be performed. This will demonstrate a dilated duodenum with inversion of the superior mesenteric artery and vein. If you see a whirlpool sign, this indicates acute volvulus. If a child has radiographically proven symptomatic rotation, they should be taken urgently to the operating room. Children who are malrotation variant, i.e. have equivocal imaging, with or without mild symptoms, should have close observation and repeated contrast studies. This slide reviews the surgical technique. The procedure typically performed is known as a LAS procedure. To perform this procedure, an incision is first made in the right upper quadrant or midline. The bowel is then eviscerated or removed from the abdominal wall cavity and mesentery. A counterclockwise detorsion of bowel is performed. One then divides the lad's cecal bands. 
broadening the small intestine mesentery. An incidental appendectomy is also performed. Finally, the small bowel is placed along the right lateral gutter and the colon along the left lateral gutter. Surgeons can return for a second look in 24 to 48 hours if perfusion to the bowel is uncertain. If valvulus or obstruction is present, the patient will need a nasogastric tube following the procedure. Typically, bowel function returns in one to five days. If extensive small bowel is removed, patients may require total parental nutrition or TPN. Patients with extensive small bowel removed should also be considered for small bowel or multivisceral transplantation. In general, you need about half of your bowel to survive without TPN and less if the ileocecal valve is present. Further reasoning is suggested in Ashcroft's Pediatric Surgery and Nelson's Textbook of Pediatrics.